I want to pick up where we left off. Of course, we've been connecting with Christ. By now, we are familiar with our class. We know that some people have, even last week, were having issues. Let me just mention this before I go forward. If you know someone that's having issues, tell them to email me in terms of their connection. Also, check their security settings. We understand from Zoom, some people security settings, which is up at the top right, typically on your email, will block certain things. So you check and make sure it's not blocking out Zoom. So if you know someone who's having that challenge, let them know that that would be a way to address it. Also, um, while I have uh, a second, let me just throw this in as well. We do a prayer line every day and, and I decided to share this with you because I, saw, I see so many prayer requests coming each week and we pray every day at 3.16 p.m. Uh, we have it posted on whosoeverbelieves.org in terms of how you connect, but it's you can watch it on YouTube, you can watch it on um, our website, you can watch it on uh, uh, with Facebook Live or um, uh, Periscope out of uh, our part of Twitter. And 3.16 p.m. every day, you more importantly, or just as important, I should say, can call in. And the number for anybody who's interested, we'll put it in the chat, but it's 425-436-6385. The access code is 170607-POUND. That's 425-436-6385. Access code 170607-POUND. It's 3.16 p.m., seven days a week. We pray um, because this is a time where we need to be praying. Uh, if there was ever a time we needed to be praying, we need to be praying now. So I encourage anybody who has that desire, nothing mandatory about it, only because I'm finding that we need prayer, but also just hearing and seeing as I look back over the chat each week, how many prayer requests we have. And we want you to know that that's an opportunity for you to connect and join with others. People actually come on our website from around the world. They pray over the things that are on our prayer wall and they look at our prayer lines. So uh, we want to encourage you to do that as well. I see our St. Kitts lady is here again. Praise God for you. Uh, Texas is in the house as well. Praise God for all you guys. Indiana, Belize, good to have you all. Okay. Now, let me move forward. So we're at part three, breaking free from fear. Want to just reboot in that we'll look back a little bit at what we talked about last week. I want to reemphasize fear is rooted in what we believe. If we believe something could possibly harm us or some way hurt us, uh, hurt somebody that we love or hinder us in any way, we're, it's based on what we believe and we then act on that belief or if nothing else, we respond emotionally out of that belief and we walk in fear. But freedom from fear requires faith in God. I don't know if you can see my shirt, but faith over fear. That's what God wants us to choose. Faith over fear. Okay. Freedom from fear comes when we fear God. And that's where we kind of left off last week. And we're going to pick up today and talking about choosing to fear God versus choosing to fear man. But I also threw this in. Freedom from fear comes when God is God. Why do I say that? Because anytime we don't fully comprehend and, and embrace the magnitude of who God is, we then exalt other things and other people in our lives to a place where we deem them to be capable of hurting us or somehow hindering us because we're placing them above God. Now, we wouldn't say that, of course, but the reality is, unless we truly uh, exalt God as God and recognize him as who he is, 
Otherwise, we are allowing other things to be exalted, other people to be exalted. And so we're not letting God be God. We're letting that thing that we're worrying about be God, that person that we're fearing. We're doing all of that, allowing all of that to be God instead of letting God be God. So I challenge you today that when you go through this study, that I'm believing God for a breakthrough to believe God for who he said he is, when we get to that place, then everything else will pale by comparison. I liken it to when Jesus said, if any man comes after me, he must hate his mother, his father, his sister, his brother. And of course, we know God doesn't want us to hate our loved ones. But what he wants it to be like is when you compare it to how much you love me, it looks like hate. That's how much I want you to love me with all your heart. And so when you compare who God is to everybody else, that would cause or everything else that would cause you to fear it should pale by comparison okay so what is the fear of god we talked about reverence trust respect awe confidence in who he is and who and his ability what he says and his truth in other words when i'm fully persuaded that he is sovereign, that he is almighty, that, that he is truly God almighty, who he said he is, maker of heaven and earth. When I really get that comprehension and that I belong to him, I can't help but be at all. But even just recognizing the magnitude of his being, if I truly comprehend it, then how could I not respect? How could I not reverence him? Let's look at Proverbs 29 and 25. Proverbs 29 and 25. I think we touched on this last week. But let me just make sure. My spectacles. It says the fear, yes, we did. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. And we looked at it. We said fear in man, what does it do? It causes us to snare. It traps us. It keeps us bound. On the other hand, trusting in the Lord exalts us, lifts us above those things that would cause us to be afraid. And we talked about, we asked, can they coexist? And so that's the question. Can I fear God and man at the same time? And I submit that we flip-flop is what I believe. Because we think, we say, oh, I trust God, I love God, I fear God. But then we turn around and fear some situation and fear some uh, man or person or people over God, over recognizing that he keeping us, that we are engraved in the palm of his hand that nothing can happen in our lives unless he allows it. So if we are fearing other things, I would submit to you that in that moment, we are not trusting God. I was listening to uh, Joyce Myers last night and she was talking about fear. And she said something which, which is true. Fear won't ever go away. Fear is a part of life that God knows that we will deal with. Why? Because if you go back and look at everything that uh, we've been told, we know that uh, over and over in scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, over and over and over, one of the things that you constantly see is God saying, do not fear. Why? Because I'm with you. I am with you. You don't have to be afraid. Let's look at Psalm 103. I think this is where we got to last week because in understanding the fear of God, we need to fully embrace who God is. Psalm 103, 19. What does that tell us? Hmm.
The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. So what does that tell us about our God? He's sovereign. His throne is over all. He rules over all. He sees all. He's sovereign. So if I really believe that, if I really understand that, then instead of panicking when things happen, what would I do? If Let me put it to you this way. If your father has some money, he always the money man. At least that's how it was when I was growing up, when I was little at least. The ice cream man show up. You hear that bell, you know, they don't have that these days, I don't think, like we had it back in the day. But we go lose our mind. Ice cream, man, we screaming and running like we crazy kids. But what was the first thing you think I did? You think I stood there and said, oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to get no ice cream. Oh, the ice cream man's not going to give me no ice cream. You think that's what I did? No. The first thing I did was run to the one who could take care of business. I ran to my father. Daddy, give me a dollar. Back then, a dollar meant something. I could get two, three things for a dollar. Uh, get a dollar and all four of us could eat some ice cream. Give me a dollar, daddy, so I can get some ice cream. And of course, my sisters would always tell me to go because I was the youngest. So he knew, they knew he wouldn't tell me no. So they say, daddy, go ask daddy for a dollar so we can get some ice cream. Shoot, we probably could get more than, now I'm saying four. We probably were paying 15 cents for us, pop. What do they call them? Blow, them red, white, and blue, big old pops. I don't even know what you call them, blow pops, whatever. Ice cream, <laughs> ice cream, sandwiches, strawberry shortcake, all that. But what's the point? In that instance, daddy was sovereign. So why am I going to stand there panicking, crying, being afraid? I'm going to go to the one who has control over this situation. So whatever I'm facing in life, who should I run to? You know, the Ghostbusters say, who are you going to call? Go to God. Don't stand there and get upset and be afraid. Go to God in prayer. Amen. All right. Psalm 89, 14. Let's go there. It says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your faith. Look at this. Righteousness and justice. You know, we live in a world where ah, we aren't always dealing with people who are righteous and just, you know, the rules change as someone said the other day, every time I get close to getting to meet the criteria and they change the criteria, you know, every time we say one thing when we in one disposition, but when, the, when our situation change, we say something else, but God is the same today, yesterday and forever. He is always righteous. He is always just. And so we can trust him and when he says whatever he says, look at it, mercy and truth go before your faith. We can trust him. He's a God who can be relied on to be trustworthy, to be merciful, and to operate in truth. When we do that, then when we recognize that, then again, just like the ice cream man show up, who do we run to when it's a time of injustice? I can remember walking in when I was working at the prison as a chaplain, Walked in one day and it felt like pick on chaplain car day. Everywhere I went, people were being rude. People were being harsh. I went up to the uh, mail room and uh, the guy who was running the mail room was being rude and nasty. And I said, what in the world? I asked him for something. He threw it at me. I said, the devil is a lie. I said, oh, y'all need me to talk to my daddy about this. It is not about me. This is about my father. And so sure enough, I went and I talked to my daddy. I said, look how they treating me, father. You know, when I went back the next day, the dude not only apologized, he got up, started handing me stuff. How can I help you? Da, 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 da. In other words, God dealt with him and he honored me. What's the word say? When, when God is pleased with a person, he'll make his enemy live at peace with him. How much more somebody who's not your enemy? You got to stop arguing with people and go to God who is the one who sits on the throne in heaven and is sovereign over all, but he's trustworthy. Let's look at the next thing. Isaiah 14. Let's go there. 
24 and 27. Excuse me. Okay, um, pardon me. Isaiah 14, 24, and 27. It says what? The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. And as I have purposed, so it shall stand, that I will break. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me stick with 24. Uh, and then 27. For the Lord of hosts has purpose, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? In other words, whatever God said is going to be, it's going to be. So if his word gave me a promise, that's why it's so important to be in your word and understand what God has said to you. Because when you do that, you come to the place where you can go back to God and say, Lord, but you said, you know, you're God of justice. You never dishonor your word. And you said, so when God has established a thing, it is so. His plans prevail. Many other plans in men's heart, but it's God's plans that prevail. And so we can trust and know that whatever God has promised, he will bring it to pass. When we uh, look at Isaiah 45, 5 through 7. It says, I am the Lord. And there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Good gracious Almighty. Who is our God? He is sovereign. He is almighty. He is well able. He can control calamity. He can control peace. That's deep right there. So that means that whenever we're facing something, we are able to be uh, rely on the fact that God is in control. He is the one who can bring peace into a situation. So why am I stand there arguing with somebody when God can control the peace? He can disrupt the peace and bring calamity if he wants. But the point is, I go to the one who's in control so that he can work out whatever I need him to work out in my situation. But more than even uh, in addition to that, I need to be able to recognize that when something comes upon me, that storm, excuse me, that storm that rises up suddenly, just like we saw when the disciples was on the sea, suddenly the storm pops up. Suddenly something happens in your life. Suddenly it feels like something comes at you to try to make you feel afraid. What are you going to do? Are you going to panic and say, God, do you care if we perish? Or are you going to go say, God, I need you to intervene in my situation? We have a God, the living God, the true and living God who oversees all, who is sovereign over all, who is trustworthy, whose plans prevail. So once we understand who he is, whatever comes up against us should pale by comparison. Why should it cause me to be afraid, worrying about anything when I know who my God is? When I know God is able to take control of any situation, why am I going to allow fear to control me at all? So he is what? Maker and ruler of all. He exalts, he puts down, he brings calamity, he brings peace. He made heaven and earth. So when I'm facing something, what should I do? When something pops up that could bring me fear, I have a choice in that minute, in that moment. Am I going to accept the fear or am I going to go to God? Am I going to allow that fear to control me 
or am I going to turn to God and trust him to work everything out? Now, I don't know about you, but I've decided I don't want to operate in fear. I don't want fear running my life. Let's look at Jeremiah 33. We're looking at verses two and three. Jeremiah 33, verse 2 says, Thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So again, he made it, he established it. So when I need something, when I need divine intervention, when I need somebody to fight for me, when I need protection, when I and facing something that will cause me to fear. What do I do? Go to God. He said, come to me. Call to me and I will answer you. That's a promise right there. So when I go to God in prayer, I can say, Lord, you promised to answer me. And here I am asking. Here I am crying out to you. I'm not coming hoping that you'll answer. I'm coming based on your word, believing you that you will answer. So we see him as omnipotent. Let's look at Jeremiah 32 and 26. Let's see, go back. 26 and 27. The Lord, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? We serve a God who's telling us that there's nothing too hard for him, that I am all powerful, that I can do anything but fail. When you understand who your God is, what is it that could come up in your life that shouldn't pale by comparison? When you understand, I am God, verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. So that means every man he created, every man, every woman that you're dealing with, what did he say? I'm God of all flesh. Watch this. He doesn't say all flesh that said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't get it twisted. Don't think because they're not in the body of Christ that he's not God over them because he created them. He knit them together in their mother's womb too. They may not acknowledge him, but he is still sovereign. So that's why he can make a promise to us like this. And that's why we can stand on it and be uh, bold in our prayers and bold in our resolve not to allow fear to dictate our lives. How many things, if you're honest, I know I have some things in my life that I look back on that I allowed the enemy to rob me of because I allowed fear to take place or, or, or the guard take uh, control of my heart. How many blessings did I forfeit allowing fear to run me away? How many opportunities did I not take advantage of out of fear? Well, they probably won't like me. Well, I'm probably not good enough. Well, whatever. But God is saying, don't be afraid of anything. I'm God. I'm God of all flesh. There's nothing too hard for me. So whenever I'm facing something now, I've learned instead of panicking, turn to God. Instead of falling apart, turn to God. Instead of being afraid, turn to God. When fear try to creep up, and people will make you afraid, speaking stuff into your ear, trying to make you be afraid because they scared, they want you to be scared with them. That devil is a lie. You go on that trip all by yourself. I'm not going with you. I don't want to take that journey. I would rather rest in the peace and the comfort of knowing that my God is sovereign and that he is in control. Let's look at Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, 
for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame is, was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. What does that tell you? Every person was knit together by God. He already knows what we're facing. He said every day that was uh, going to come about in my life, you saw it already before one of them came to be. It was already written in your book. Nothing took him by surprise. He did not wake up in March and say, oh, myself. We say, oh, God. He said, oh, me. I cannot believe that this pandemic has come. Not so. He knew this before the foundation of the earth. Nothing is a surprise to God. So consequently, again, I have the blessed assurance that he knows everything and he is everywhere and he has all power. Amen. So we know he's sovereign. He's able to do anything. And he's my personal creator. Once I recognize, put all that together, what does that say to me? Why are you afraid? That's what it says to me. I don't know what it says to you. Why are you afraid? I'm all powerful. I'm all present. I'm sovereign. I'm able to do anything. I created you. I know every day of your life before it comes to be. Why are you afraid? He already said, nothing is too hard for me. Why are you afraid? How many ever walked down the street with your big brother? My big brother was six, four, three, six, four, five, whatever he is. When I walked with my big brother, I ain't scared. When I was little, you know, I'm the youngest, like I said, so I probably, he probably you know, 16, I'm probably like seven years old. I'm walking down the street with him. I don't care who come up on me. I am not afraid. How much more knowing that I walk with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, how much more knowing I walk with El Shaddai, Almighty God, what is there to be afraid of? What can man do to me? We got to settle in our heart. God is God. Let's look at Ephesians. Chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Trying to get me a Quiet spot. I'm hiding. Still can't get a quiet spot. Blessed spot. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him. When did he choose us? Look at it. Hope y'all Bible, remember what this is, what I say, this is a BYOB affair. What does it say? Start all over. Ephesians chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So here he is, God Almighty. He selected us. He chose us even before the very foundation of the world. God already ordained, preordained for you to be his, to walk with him, to live a holy life. Notice what it says, in love. 
to be holy, be without blame before him. How? In love. I'm emphasizing that because we're going to compare that to how fear is and the relationship between fear and love. There is none. They can't both flow at the same time. But God ordained your life. He, he set you apart in advance. You're not an accident. This is no uh, happenstance. God has a plan for your life. Okay. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. I don't want us to miss that though. He chose us before the foundation of the world. Some people feel like, well, I was an accident or God didn't care or my parents didn't love me or whatever that lie the enemy has told you. God chose you before the very foundation of the world. You didn't choose him. He chose you. You know, we always say, well, when I was lost um, and then I found God, I mean, uh, I found God. Um, God wasn't the one lost. You was the one lost. Um, he, he was always there in your life. You just didn't recognize. Him. He was always watching over you. You just didn't recognize. Him. That doesn't mean we have a perfect history or every, nothing went wrong in our lives. But do you not know that everything that he allowed, he will use? Because he said all things work together for the good of those who love him. So every situation, I was looking at that uh, movie I was preaching yesterday, and I'll use it as an example called Unbroken. What I learned about this guy, he was a, a prisoner of war, and he had... I've been beaten and terrorized and they did everything they could to try to break his spirit, but he would not give in. They broke his teeth and did everything, but he would not give in. He kept getting back up. If you ever get the chance, if you've never seen it, pull it up unbroken. But the powerful thing I learned about, in addition to the, the spirit that he had that would not quit, that would not let the enemy break him, was the root of it. When he was a little kid, People used to bully him. And so he had to run home all the time. He was Italian and I guess he lived around people who were uh, racist against him. So he ran home all the time trying to keep from being beat up. Well, his brother recognized that he could run fast. So he trained him. He actually ended up being a USA Olympian. But fast forward, that tenacity, that strength, that fortitude that he built up from being bullied, which isn't a great thing, now, fast forward, he's being tormented by the enemies of his country, and they're trying to break him. But because God allowed that bullying to take place, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So I'm trying to say, though you didn't have a perfect life, God is working all those things together. Ephesians 2, 8 says... For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. He gave us life. It is not by uh, your own doing that you're saved. It's by the grace of God that you're saved. But the beautiful thing is it. It, it, it operates through your faith. Watch this. He gave you the faith. He gave each man a measure of faith. That's a good, good father. Not only did he give you, remember when they told the, the uh, Egyptians got disgusted with uh, Moses when he tried to intervene to help out the Israelites. So they made it worse on the Israelites. They said, now you got to make bricks without straw. You got to go get your own straw to make the bricks. We ain't going to provide them no more. God didn't even like that. He didn't say, here's the gift of grace. You just got to get your own faith to receive it. He gave us the faith so that we can embrace the grace that he was giving us in Jesus Christ. His grace, his unmerited favor. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's given to us. That's the kind of God we serve. He gives us the gift of grace. I mean, uh, faith. So we can then accept the gift of grace, which is, of course, in Christ Jesus himself. And then he gives us gifts and, and calls us so that we can perform the good works that he's planned for us in advance. All right. 
Look at Psalm 138 and 8. And we saw that already. I guess I didn't click that. Before the foundation of the earth, God called you to be holy and blameless. He predestined you to be his child in love, as I emphasized before, not fear. Let's look at Psalm 138 and 8 real quick. Psalm 138 and 8 says, says the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Again, Remembering who your God is, remembering that he's trustworthy, remembering that he's sovereign. Now think about this. God said, I will perfect, I will complete everything concerning you. So when something shows up in your life that would otherwise cause you to fear or tre be in trepidations or, or tremble or, or otherwise worry, be anxious, what is the sovereign God saying? I got you, girl. I got you, dude. I will perfect everything concerning you. You don't need to be stressing or anxious or worried or fretting. I got you. How many would rest easier when situations came up if they realized that God had their back, that God was with them, that nothing could happen to them that God hadn't already recognized would come along. When you begin to put God in his rightful place in your life, everything else becomes more minute. Everything else becomes much more uh, minuscule by comparison to the great God that you serve. Great God is I. Uh, Y'all gonna make me preach up in here. God said, not Letty, not you, not your mama, not your daddy. I will perfect everything that concerns you. When I know that, do you not think I ever go before God and say, Lord, look at this situation in my life. You said you will perfect everything concerning me. Okay, 1 John 4, look at verse 9 and 10. It says, whew, what does it say? In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our, our in verse 8 it says there is no fear in love fear has been made perfect in love so what's God saying when you have wrestled with and settled in your spirit that I then you have no fear you walk in love Back to me walking with my brother. My brother loves me. He's got me. He's going to protect me. I feel his presence. Perfect love drives any sense of fear out of my heart. When you stand, because the overrepresented of this chapter beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets have gone out into the world by this you know the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come into the flesh is coming to flesh is not of god and this is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and was now already in the world you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. When you understand who God is, 
you understand that whatever you're facing in this world, again, pales by comparison because greater is your God. Anything that you're going to face in this world, you don't have to be afraid. When you recognize not only is the you serve greater than anybody. Watch this. He lives in you. He in you than he that's in the world. The devil, every human, every situation will have to bow who are in Christ. You don't have to walk around afraid. I'm from anybody. We didn't know. Clark Kent was Superman because he had that shirt and that jacket on. But as soon as he encountered some situation, he smashed that thing and he reckon and everybody recognized, wait a minute, this dude is greater than anything that we're facing in this world. I need somebody understand who you are in Christ. What you encounter? Whatever comes again, God is greater. Amen. Let's see. Can you all hear me now? Reverend Letty, it's better now, but it keeps going in and out. Um, somebody said that share screen sharing have to do so. more bandwidth. Yeah. Okay. Know. Okay. All right. Let me see where I am. But you're clear. Let in me see right now. where I am. Okay. Did y'all hear what I said? Greater is he in me than he that's in the world? Could you hear what? For the sake of I missed what God is trying to tell us. Let me skip ahead. Praise God. I see this is this is war. Bless God. I will do my part and do some double checking on our end in terms of our our um our uh, internet. It's funny that we haven't had any problems with anything that I've done except when I've been preaching and teaching. I have done prayer line with no problem. I've done Zoom, but as soon as I start missing the word, boom. Although I've missed the word on the prayer line, but I'm saying the particular things that I've been sharing. But nevertheless, we're going to work it out. So here we are. Look at this last scripture. Let's go to Romans chapter let's see here. Eight. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says, 
For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Talking about the spirit of fear now. So if you look in 2 Timothy chapter 1, hold your finger there, Romans 8. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says that, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you look at that, along with Romans 8.15, we hear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So these tell us that the spirit that God gave us, which is the, he is not the spirit of fear. He is not a spirit of fear. Um, he is a spirit of power because he is God, love and a sound mind. So when we think of fear, we can think of it in two ways. Oftentimes you'll hear uh, people say, just like the uh, disciples on the boat. You know, something jumped up, something happened in my life, I became afraid. On the other hand, that's what we would call, I mean, not on the other hand, that's what we would call just a natural response, a natural fear. On the other hand, when people read 1 Timothy 1, 7, and they say, God did not give us a spirit of fear, many then say, well, there is a spirit of fear versus just a natural fear that responds out of the natural. A spirit of fear, meaning that something has, if you will, indwelled me, a spirit that is causing me to fear beyond a normal or natural fear. A spirit of fear being something that is more demonically based, something that is uh, something that requires deliverance from, is different from just a natural normal fear. Now, I will submit to you, some interpret this scripture merely to say, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. Like if I said, God didn't give you no junk. Not saying that it was saying he didn't give you the other spirit, which is the spirit of fear. More, he was just saying, this is not what God is giving you. Others interpret that as there is a spirit of fear that can be indwelling a person, can cause them to have supernatural anxiety and worry beyond the norm, beyond a natural level. It, it grips them to a place where they become incapacitated and they have to have ministry to be able to deal with that. The key thing is God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit that is of love. We walk in love. It is a power. We saw greater is he in us than he that's in the world. It is of a sound mind. It is that God's spirit is a, a spirit that gives us the capacity to walk in power, gives us the capacity to walk in soundness so we're not so intimidated and so uh, frightened or so anxious that we can't, we're paralyzed, we can't function. We have a sound mind. If somebody feels like they have been indwelled or, or taken over, if you will, by a spirit of fear, then they want ministry they want somebody to help them pray for them to help them get delivered from that but that is not what god gave us he gave us a spirit that's of love a spirit we saw in romans 8 15 that gives us the assurance that we're his children we're not in a bondage of fear and therefore we can speak and therefore we can believe that our god is greater than anything that we encounter in this world and therefore we can take the choice make the choice of not walking in fear because fear is something we can allow to overtake us or something we can reject. It is something that we can choose. How do I know that? Because God tells us over and over, do not be afraid. What did he tell Joshua? Don't be afraid. The Lord your God is with you. If he was telling Joshua that, that's telling me that he had a choice in the matter. He wouldn't have told Joshua, don't be afraid if Joshua was overtaken uh, uh, by a bondage, by a, a spirit of fear. No, Joshua, you have a choice. You don't have to be afraid. You can choose not to be afraid because you know that I am with you. 
And when you read the first chapter of Joshua, you see him speaking to uh, Joshua over and over, be of good courage. Look at verse nine, Joshua chapter one. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Somebody needs to put that on and not have to be afraid. Whatever I'm facing, whatever comes up in my life, all is well. <clears throat> because God is with me. Because God will perfect everything concerning me. Amen. I wanted to try, and this is going to be a little challenging, but I'm, 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 a, I'm up for the game, for the uh, challenge, rather. And that is, I want to see, because after we finished last week, one of the things that came up was that we um, had people that had some comments they shared that was positive feedback. I kind of hung around late and um, heard some feedback. So one of the things that I want to do after we re go through our, our questions is, uh, or as we go through our questions, I should say, is see if we can have people raise their hand if they want to make. In the meantime, as I shared before, anytime that you um, have a question throughout the class, be posting your questions so that as we get toward the end, we'll be able to answer your questions. So we're at a place now, I think I'm in light of all of the rigmarole with this here computer, internet, we're gonna end here and then we're gonna take questions. So does anybody have any questions? Has anybody posted any questions? Let's see what we got going on. Do we have any questions, team? Let's see. If you have a question, post it in the chat so we, we can see it. And if you would like to ask your question in person, you can raise your hand so that my team can see your hand and then they will be able to allow you to unmute. Let's see here. I'm not seeing. Okay, maybe I can see them. This is how do we determine whether we are experiencing fear or are experiencing discernment? Because discernment gives me understanding of what I'm dealing with. Um, it means that I have, I'm, in a sense, God is answering uh, or, or guide, guiding me by giving me an insight or understanding so that I know how to deal with a situation. Fear keeps me in a place where I'm terrified or timid or um, hesitant to act because I'm afraid. Discernment means if I walk into a room and the Holy Spirit says, watch your back because there's some people in here who are dead. I'm going to be paying attention. Fear says, oh, I got to watch everybody because somebody might get me. Those are two different things. I'm scared. I'm jumpy. I'm running. I'm hesitant. I'm, I'm always worried that something's going to happen to me. Discernment says, watch to your right, watch to your left, go this way, go that way. You, you ever seen The Matrix? Remember when, if you saw The Matrix, I'm a movie fan, so I will throw a movie at you from time to time. The young man, Neo, was being chased, and, and Morpheus, who's in his ear on the phone, says, okay, turn right right there. Go this way. Do that way. Go out this window. Discernment will guide you and give you wisdom and tell you, don't believe that person, they lying to you. Walk this way, walk back. 
Fear has you anxious, worried, stressing, unable to really move or do anything because you're so worried all the time. You're on edge. You're on pins and needles. That's fear. Hopefully I can, uh, that made sense to you. I believe it is helpful too that you have a supportive circle so that when fear, let's see, what does that say? When fear comes, they can echo what we know and remind you of everything you share. Amen. That's good. You need people who are firm and speak life into you. Don't, don't walk with people who are always, um, causing you to fear more. Some people, because they're going to help you to grow and help you to trust God. During this season of judgment should not be cautious. You should be aware, but being aware and being afraid are two different things. Remember what the example I gave of walking with my brother? If I'm walking with my brother, that doesn't mean I'm going to walk out in front of a car. I'm not saying be stupid and, and pay no attention. Yes, you're going to be aware, but being afraid is very different because you're like, tight you know your blood pressure is pumping your heart's pumping because you're scared to move this being aware i'm walking in peace i'm just aware that there's some things around me that could cause me danger but i don't i'm not the 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 turmoil is not churning on the inside if that makes sense okay uh i see something else Tell me if I'm missing. Okay, did anybody raise their hand that wanted to give a comment or have a question? Because I can't see. I'm relying on my folks to tell me. Okay. I'm assuming not. Let's see. I have a question, um, Betty. Can you hear me? Okay. Who's this? This is Janet. Yes, ma'am. Who is this? This is Janet. Can you hear me? Okay. Hey, Janet. What's your question? Um, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you address, um, like, if you if if God has spoken something to you that just seems way out of your reach, which a lot of things are, um, can you address that with fear? And it, it kind of reminds me of like when many people say it. Is, uh do it afraid. Mm -hmm. But um, I was just wondering if you could speak to that. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. When God calls you to a thing or gives you a vision of something, 99% of the time, if it's God, it's beyond your reach. If it was in your reach, 90% of the time, it's you. And, and I'm not saying God can't give you something simple to do. Of course he can. But I'm saying when he gives you a big vision, that means he has a big plan for you. And it takes courage to trust him. And if you allow, you will, keep, you will let fear keep you from stepping out of the boat like Peter did. Keep, you allow fear to keep you from going out into the deep. When Jesus said, go out further, you'll catch some fish. They had to go out into the deep to catch that, that big, big uh, uh, overflowing, um, net busting kind of harvest. It's safe by the shore. Going out in the deep requires faith and trust in God. So when, what you want to do is pray and make sure you've heard God. And once you are sure that you have heard God, then you have to then turn around and say, God, give me the courage to trust you and to do what you've told me to do. Okay? Because just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not God. More likely is it is God because your flesh always chooses the safe route. Your spirit man is big and he dreams big dreams and he speaks big stuff. Like, like Jesus said, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Mm. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. Somebody said, when you say you have a choice regarding the spirit of fear, yet you concur with Jesus. I mean, Joyce Joe, Meyer. I didn't never say you that you will have a choice regarding the spirit of fear. I said, fear 
will be around forever. The spirit of fear is a totally different thing. Fear will be around, meaning that every time you get ready to go outside, fear can meet you at the door saying, you could get hit by a car, you could have an accident. You know, you watch enough news, you'll be scared to open your door when the doorbell ring because there's always something that could bring fear. So I'm saying those opportunities to be afraid will always be with us. We have to choose to say, I'm trusting in the Lord and he's going to see me through this thing. And he is sovereign and he is with me and he is perfecting everything concerning me. So I'm not going to be afraid. Okay. We'll take one more question, then we got to move because we're running out of time. Uh, let's see here. I think it's some more questions that I'm not seeing, but my whole situation here. Um, did anybody else raise their hand that had a question? If not, we'll move yeah. forward. Okay, who is I have us? a question. Who's that? I have a question. Rita. Who is it? Rita. Rita. Okay, mm -hmm. Rita, go ahead, my dear. During this time of the um, COVID-19, I know we mm -hmm. shouldn't fear, but shouldn't we be cautious? Yes, by all means. Um, in other words, you will always be in situations that require wisdom. God never said, don't use wisdom. Remember when the devil came to the Lord and said, throw yourself down off of this um, yeah. mountain and I'll give you everything. Yeah. Jesus said, don't put the Lord your God to the test. So wisdom means that I take care of myself. I'm not going to go outside without a mask on. God is going to take care of me. When wisdom counsels doctors, people who has given wisdom said, wear a mask, I'm going to wear a mask. People can wear masks and still die from COVID. So I'm trusting God that this mask is protected by, but I'm wearing this mask out of obedience to the wisdom you have given me. I'm not going to walk out in front of a, a truck and say, God is protecting me. You can't walk in front of a truck and expect that suddenly the truck ain't going to kill you. You don't put God to the test use the wisdom he's given us but wisdom means that i'm trusting you i'm doing the best i know to do i'm doing all i can do in the natural and i'm trusting your super so that i walk in the supernatural so it's not that i just throw caution to the wind it is that i trust god i see zenora a uh, genius has her hand up we'll take her and that'll be the last one that's me brother that's me oh that was you yeah. Okay. Why is it read? You said read. Yeah, I know, but I, I logged <laughs> in uh, under her email. <laughs> oh, okay. Got you. So we got you. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Praise God, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for your patience. I don't know what happened with my internet, but we're going to figure this thing. If anybody who uh, is with us, an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And if you are in a place where you have not done that, today is the day to get it right. The reason I could share all these promises with you and walk in the confidence as greater as he that's in me, the he that's in the world, is because Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus lives in me. His spirit is in me. His uh, presence covers me. His angels surround me. I have something that I could never have without him, and that is the blessed assurance. Of knowing he's got me so if you have not come to that place where you can rest in the lord and know that god has you i want to invite you now to say yes to the lord jesus i want you to put your name in that chat and say i want to give my life to christ i need jesus tonight if you're in a place where you have not uh, been assured in your spirit that if you died you would go to heaven you need to put your name down and say, I'm not sure. I need to know for sure that I'll go to heaven. God wants you to know for sure. If you're not certain, put your name down in the chat. If you're in a place where you're backslidden, you gave your heart to Christ and you uh, got out of alignment, now you're not living right, you want to get it right, you're coming back home, you want to rededicate, put your name down and say, hey, I want to rededicate my life to Christ. 
And lastly, if you want to uh, join the church, you want to be a part of First Baptist Church of Glenard, uh, you want to be a member, then this would be a time for you to say, yes, I want to join the church. So all of those, you want to accept Jesus Christ, you're not sure about your salvation, you are backslidden, or you want to uh, be a member of this church, put your name and put down what it is that you want God to do. Um, I also invite you to send me an email, revlettycar at whosoeverbelieves.org. I love hearing um, that you have done that. So you can uh, send me an uh, email and I will be able to make sure that we follow up with you. There is so much that we can talk about on this topic and we'll try to pick it up next week, um, get past what we thought we could get past today and, and try to move forward. But know that God, if you read the scripture, God is with you. God will perfect everything concerning you. God is sovereign. God shows you all of those things. God is uh, greater in you than in, he that's in the world. Perfect love casts out fear. All those things will feed your spirit with the power that you need to overcome fear. Because remember how we started out? Fear is what you believe. What do you think? The battle is right here in your mind. Do you think God is all those things that he said he is? And if you believe they are, then you will say, hey, I don't have anything to be afraid of. Okay?